last week uh, certainly wasn't um, what I anticipated going out there. I knew BYU was an awfully good football team. Uh, felt like we would definitely make it a better show than we did. Um, you know, we were in a, uh, a really good football game. It was 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, had an opportunity to um, get a stop on fourth down. Got really good field position. We're driving down, got to about the 40-yard line, threw the interception. Uh, then we stopped them, got it back, went back down, got back down into the red zone, got a, got a holding call, got a penalty, took ourselves out, and it seemed like it started to get away from us there. They scored on about their next four possessions, and then I think the one that really kind of made the game lopsided was right before half when they took the two-minute drive down and were able to score and then got it in the third quarter and scored again. It went from 21 nothing to 35 nothing before we ever got the ball again. Um, I think it was a, a learning experience for our players. I think it was definitely a different venue with nobody in the stands, and I mean nobody. Um, it was almost eerie quiet, um, but I don't think that had anything to do with our play. I think it was more uh, the production of BYU. I thought their defensive line played really well. I think they've got a really good ball club on defense, and they they did some things structurally to uh, to help protect some of the players that we were really going in to try and kind of get some one-on-one -on -one matchups with. And then their quarterback is as advertised. I said we made the comment when we watched Patrick Mahomes a couple of years ago that he was really good, and when we watched Dak Prescott, he was really good. Well, I think the same thing's going to be said as Zach Wilson. I think he's a he's a really good football player. He was really good the other night. We contested some throws, and he put him the only place they could be. But then there's a lot of things that we need to do to get better. Um, defensively, we're certainly not playing where we want to be. Um, I think some of the uh, inexperience over on that side showed a little bit more. I think guys started pressing. We uh, we made some routine errors that we haven't been making. Then um, those are some of the things that we got to clean up and getting ready for this week with uh, with UTEP. Hi, right, questions for Skip? Bo? Coach, you mentioned the quarterback, but that defense really impressed me at BYU has. I don't know if I've ever seen them with a the defense that good. But they're what did you think? <clears throat> their front, their their front three down linemen create havoc. They we had a hard time blocking them. Uh, I don't think we played very well at tackle. I think we played okay inside with the nose guard with big uh, big Tonga as a nose guard who I think is an absolute force. Um, but you know there were some things like the first play of the game. We had a guy wide open running across the field and. We get beat at right tackle, and you know as we throw it up, uh, we get our arm hit. It's incomplete. I mean, they they wreaked havoc. Um, the running game was non-existent, and it enabled them with them being able to control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, especially on the defensive side of the ball. It really gave them the opportunity to do some things to take away our perimeter passing game. Uh, the one big play we had to smoke Harris. Uh, we got into an empty set, and they tried to put six men on the line of scrimmage and try and uh, force us out of empty. Uh, but when we were able to throw that bubble out there and get smoke in, in space, that was about the only real highlight that we had offensively. Uh, and that was made because they tried to get us out of empty. And then they went back to doing what they did and put the pressure on those D linemen, and they controlled the line of scrimmage. They really did a nice job, and they do have a really good defense. They're very... Uh, they're very mature. They're very fundamental in what they do. They know their defense. They're not very complicated in what they do, but they execute it very, very well. Question, Corey. Skip, good to see you. Um, we if, asked, uh, if this is being, if this is, if this is being seen, I guess it's good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we got the opportunity to talk with Smoke a little bit ago, I asked him this question. Um, he said, you know, he goes into every game uh, trying to trying to make it a, an opportunity to to really impress you guys as the coaching staff to allow himself to, to have more responsibility in, in the game planning and, and what you guys try to call, you know, to maybe get the ball in his hands. Just talk about the way Smoke has approached this year and what's been really, uh, really sticking out to you. You know, I've always said the best thing about freshmen is one day they become sophomores. And that's because after they have that first year of experience, they really start to understand what it's all about. 
They understand the commitment it takes, the de attention to detail, doing the little things the right way, and, and the my bad doesn't work anymore. You know, my bad means punt. You know what I mean? And I think Smoke has had a great offseason. I think he's really matured as a football player. He understands the offense very well. Uh, how to set up blocks. It's not just instinctual. Now, once we throw it to him and he gets out in the open field, you can see what his instincts can do as a punt returner, as an open field runner. But what he's doing is having a really good understanding of reading defenses and running some of the option routes that we're running with them underneath and when to break in and when to break out. And uh, he's really doing a nice job with it. But Smoke is a guy that certainly is starting to uh, make an emergence, just as Griffin Abair did a year ago. Uh, I think the addition of Smoke this year, and 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 I I can't say I think there's some guys that played really well in this game, but the receiving core right now, the way Adrian Hardy and Isaiah Graham's playing, but uh, the emergence again of Wayne Toussaint, who's taken that same step that Smoke is, uh, a guy like Kyle Ma Maxwell, who's a redshirt freshman, who's really got in at some critical times and made some really good plays for us. C J. Powell continues to do what he's doing. And then Juwan Johnson is the other guy right now that's in that first year that I think is really talented. But uh, that whole group, both the inside and the outside groups, have really come a long way as far as maturing, creating depth where we're not having to play one guy 80 plays where he has to save himself for the passing game. They're, they're blocking well on the perimeter. They're playing complete games. They're running good routes. Uh, they're fresh, and I think a lot of that is by having a C.J. Powell and now a Smoke and now a Smoke Harris, it's giving you too deep, as it is at A with Jawan Johnson and Griffin Bear, as it is at X and as it is at Z. And right now I think those guys are really doing a nice job. Question? Go ahead, Bo. Coach, you said you were coming out of game plan. Tell us what you've seen and what you know about Utah. Uh, it's not the same UTEP. Uh, they're three and one right now as a football team. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, their defense, starting on that side of the ball, they have 16 junior college or transfer players on the defensive side of the ball, and they're too deep. Um, they've really uh, worked hard to try and make a difference with their personnel, and they've done a really nice job. Uh, they are second or they're fourth in the uh, in the league right now, I think, in total defense. They're second in the league and third down. They're only giving up 24%. They've held three of their last four opponents to 14 points, 13 points, and six points. Uh, what they're doing uh, offensively, they're controlling the football. They, they have a young quarterback who's playing really well. I think he's fifth or sixth in the league right now in passing yards. They have a sophomore receiver who's uh, fourth in the league in receptions. Their tailback, who's a freshman, is third in the league in touchdowns. They're controlling the ball. They lead the league in time of possession right now. Uh, but offensively, they're slowing the game down. They're making first downs. They're controlling the ball. And defensively, they're playing a much more uh, aggressive style where they're trying to get off the field. They're going to force you uh, to play against man coverage. They're going to force you to make some tight throws and to get the ball down the field. And so uh, it's going to be a challenge for us on both sides of the ball. Uh, but I think it's a, you know, it's a conference team, it's a division team, having the opportunity to play at home. I think our football team is really excited to get back into conference play. Uh, but I think definitely when you put on UTEP's film, they're, they've gotten everybody's attention. I don't think they're the same UTEP that they've been. Yes, yeah, Skip, kind of to follow up on that, you know, when a, when a coaching staff goes out and tries to, uh, you know, sort of inject a lot of uh, experience with JUCO players on, on one particular side of the ball, how have you sort of seen that influx of guys coming in for UTEP's defense? How it's just really sort of changed the way they, they approach things? Well, they're playing much more aggressive. I think they have more speed on the field than they've had in the past. Um, you know, it's a... Sometimes when you go that route, it can really help you and it can hurt you. I mean, there's two ways to go. It's kind of a risky move, but I think with where they were, they just felt like they had to make some personnel changes and they've certainly gotten more athletic on the defensive side of the ball. I've really been impressed uh, with the job they've done with the program and the changes they've made. And when you sit down and watch a film, they're playing, they're playing with a lot more confidence and they're playing much more aggressive than they have in the past.
Go ahead, Ben. Uh, is there any sort of message that you give to some of your young defensive backs after they, uh, you know, had some struggles against a good BYU team this past Friday night? You know, we have – we, we certainly have our struggles on the back end, and uh, a lot was made during the off season that out of our four secondary positions, uh, we graduated seven players. Not only did we graduate four of our starters, but we graduated the backups and, and Roberson and Trey Spencer and uh, Ephraim Kitchen. You know, maybe those guys weren't the first team guys, but they created a lot of depth for us. Uh, and we're upperclassmen. So when you graduate that many guys in the back end, there's a lot of new faces back there. There's, you know, Zach Hannibal's played a little bit, and uh, Jaden Cole and B.J. Williamson is a freshman last year, but not very much. And so you have a lot of new faces back there, and we knew there were going to be some growing pains. I think what compounds that is the quality quarterbacks we've played in our first three games. I think, obviously, when you look at what Zach Wilson did last week, I know he's setting BYU records for the highest passing rating through the first three games and the only quarterback to have over a 200 passing rating, I think, in the first three games. I think uh, he's a quality, quality quarterback. You look at um, – when we played Houston Baptist, he's leading the country in passing. And you look at Jack Abraham, who's leading our conference in passing. So uh, we have certainly kind of were learning by fire because a lot of these guys didn't have spring practice and they didn't have a lot of fall camp scrimmages. And so I feel like we're kind of uh, learning in live work. You know, we're learning as we go. And I keep saying we're going to learn a lot about our football team. Uh, how they're going to handle adversity, how they're going to handle it when they're getting beat, how they're going to handle it. Uh, there aren't a lot of quarterbacks that can make some of the throws that Zach Wilson made uh, on Friday night. I mean, it was really, really impressed with him. What we've got to do is look at it and say, what do we got to do to get better? Uh, that is really our biggest battle cry right now is what do we got to do to improve as a football team? We did not play our best game. As I said, we started pressing. We had um, we got to make the routine play. We've got to make people at least earn it. We gave up too many uncontested plays uh, with guys being in a wrong gap or somebody misfitting it or having a missed assignment. Um, there's some things that we have to do, but we've got to get better fundamentally and we've got to get better in our defense. And we've got to do it fast because not only do we get into – uh, conference play, which is what the ultimate goal and what we're trying to do, um, but we got to do it in a hurry. And we've been playing some really good quarterbacks, and we've got some good quarterbacks that are coming up. So we've got to we've got to get better, and that's the biggest battle cry we have right now as a football team is we've got to improve us. We've got to improve us. We can't worry about our opponent. We've got enough things that we got to correct. And watching the film, now uh, we're spending more time and watching our BYU film and some of the corrections that have to be made than we are trying to put in new schemes with a very young team. We're just trying to get to where we can um, execute. As I always say, we got to pick the ball up and we got to throw it to first base. Go ahead, Bo. Coach, taking COVID into consideration and injuries, do you see a little more depth this weekend? Or do you, are you getting more players to better health? Yeah, I, I made that comment in the staff meeting this morning. I think, you know, knock on wood, but right now where we are as healthy as we've been. We've got a, a couple guys during camp that maybe had some six to eight, six to eight week injuries that uh, have missed a little bit, but certainly when, when we went through the hurricane and the Southern Miss game and so many guys out, it has just been a turnstile at, at a couple positions for us. On the offensive line last week, we had six players out. Um, and so you don't have a lot of depth, and you've got guys that you got to dance with the date you brought. You know, I mean, somebody lays on the ground, and you say you have to get up. I mean, there's not anybody else. <laughs> you got you got to go. And so, uh, just making practice and everything, we actually are not only two deep, but potentially three deep at a number of positions. We get Mackie Carabin back this week, Gerald Wilbon. We're going to get a better view with him as a defense alignment being back, DJ Jackson being back as a defense alignment. We had two nose guards out and a couple linebackers out in that game. And just to show you the impact that a Trey Baldwin makes, he's our leading tackler, I think, on Saturday, and uh, he only played half the game. 
You know, I mean, and so I think that having him back, Tyler Grubbs getting that experience, having Mackie Carabin back, Alan Walker having an opportunity to play all those plays, getting Gerald Wilbon, getting DJ Jackson. You know, we still have to go through a wave of three tests this week. You know, so we've got to survive these three. But where we are right now at the beginning of the week, I think it's as healthy as we've been. And I really commend our players for once COVID gets into your program to try and get it out is not easy. And and your players have to be really smart and responsible with what they're doing and wearing masks and practicing social distancing and doing all those things. And they've really done a nice job uh, since the S- the Southern Miss game of trying to get it under control. And we've we've had maybe one or two almost every test uh, leading up until this week. And then we had the last couple last week were, were clean. And so hopefully we're starting to get everybody back and get a get a healthy roster. So like I said, we'll see what this week holds. But right now I'm excited about going to practice today. Okay, Corey. Skip through uh, through three games. Uh, where would you assess where your where your running game is offensively, and 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 where do you where do you start there? If there are places for correction. Well, I would have said going in after two games, I would have said it's doing a nice job. You know, after two games, I would have said that. Uh, it's certainly not stellar. We're not in mid-season form. Um, we got to get better at some little things, but we're not far off. Uh, if you evaluate us off Saturday's game, I tell you we've got to go back to the drawing board and kind of throw everything in the trash can and start over. Um, when you look at what the way that we ran the ball to a two-yard average uh, on Saturday, now we or Friday, we abandoned the running game a little bit because of the lopsided score being 35 to seven at the beginning of the third quarter. Um, and so we abandoned it a little bit and went to a little bit more of a drop back passing game, which I, I said on the headsets to Coach Sloan, you know, this really, this really isn't fair to a quarterback that's playing in this offense for his third game to all of a sudden you're in a drop back passing game and putting the ball under his arm. Um, I don't know that he's ready for, uh, for that with this offense and I've got to do a little bit better job of being patient and protecting the young quarterbacks that we have. I say young even though Luke is an experienced quarterback, he's not experienced in this offense and you could tell a couple times that he probably uh, he probably left the pocket a little early. Uh, they were rushing three. There weren't a lot of windows out there. They were really disciplined in what they were doing, and he had to be patient. And there was a couple times that his first read wasn't there, and he was gone, you know, taking off running. And that, that'll come, and that'll be a great learning experience for him to see this film. Uh, I also say that, and somebody gave me the, st- the statistic yesterday that I think Luke Anthony is only the third quarterback through three games to throw for two to throw for 10, 10 touchdowns in the first three games and I think Tim Rattay had thrown for 11 I think it was Luke McCown had thrown for 10 and Luke Anthony has now tied that with throwing for 10 himself and so as much as I say I got to be more careful with them. I mean, I think he's also shown a lot of promise, and there's some times that he has stood in there and thrown the ball extremely well, and he's reading the field, and he's seeing the field, and he's doing a really nice job. I just, I'm excited for him to continually get seasoned as well as Aaron Allen. I think they're both very talented quarterbacks. They're both throwing the ball very accurately. They're seeing the field very well, and we've got to eliminate some of the miscues, the two interceptions we had, but uh, for the most part, I've really been pleased with the progress of them, both the quarterbacks, and I just got to do a little bit better job. So um, I think as as we can establish our running game a little bit more, I don't, I don't want to be... Uh, 80-20 uh, favoring either side, the run or the pass. I've always liked to have balance as an offensive football team uh, where we can be at a 50-50 type of team, but you also have to look at where's your production and what can you do? Where are your mismatches and what is the defense giving you? If the defense is going to load the box and try and take away your running game, I'm not afraid to be 80-20 from a passing standpoint uh, and vice versa. We've just got to be able to do them both efficiently to be able to be a balanced football team.